when we plugged in 0 to all of these? What was the answer? 1. Okay. Uh, so what do you notice about f of 0? Answer is always 1. Yeah. Don't you love my precise mathematical terminology there? Okay, what do we notice about f of 1? What do we get every time? When we plug in 1, what's the answer? It's not the same answer every time, but it is related to the function. When we plug in 1, the answer is the same as what? The base. Okay? F of 1, um, the answer is the base. of the exponential. Okay? If the base is 2, when you plug in 1, the answer is going to be 2. If the base is 1 fourth, the answer is 1 fourth when you plug in 1. Okay, what about when we plugged in negative 1? What's the relationship between 2 and 1 half? 1 fourth and 4. What do we call those numbers? 5 over 2 and 2 over 5. They have a name. Starts with an R. Not rational. Reciprocal. Answer is the reciprocal of the base. Reciprocal is just a fancy way of saying flip it over. So. If your base is 2, when you plug in negative 1, the answer is going to be the reciprocal, 1 half. Okay. Uh, now, when you did like 5 halves to the negative 1, you probably got, what, 0.4? Okay. I expressed it in fractional form specifically so you could see that. Um, same thing with the last one. When you plug in negative 1 to, into pi to the x, it's going to give you a, a weird decimal, but I expressed that as 1 over pi okay, because that's its reciprocal. Okay, so depending on what you're, obviously, pr probably everybody's going to have different answers for what you get when you plug in a positive number or a really large positive number or a really large negative number, but you should have zeros in the same places that I do. Okay, now, your calculator probably didn't explicitly tell you zero. Okay, probably, let's see if I can make this happen. Um, if I do uh, one fourth to the I don't know negative one hundred, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to do positive. My bad. I'm getting my thoughts mixed up. To the positive one hundred. Now it doesn't give me zero, but this is. This calculator's way of expressing scientific notation. So the answer here is 6.22 times 10 to the negative 61st. When you have a negative exponent with scientific notation, what is that telling you to do? Which way do you move the decimal? To the left. That means we are putting 60 zeros in front of 622. Uh, that is a really, really tiny number. Okay. Uh, and we just consider it zero. Okay. We consider that zero. Uh, and obviously, you can see when I plug in negative 100, I've got something times 10 to the positive 60th. That's moving it to the right. So this is like a 61 digit number. Okay. That is a massively huge number. Um, so let's see if we can group these. We have five functions. Do you see a trend? Can we pair three of them in one group and two of them in another group? And what's the difference between the two groups based on the positive and the negative thing right there? Okay. So which ones behave the same way when you plug in a positive, a really big positive number? Which ones behave the same? When we plug in a really large positive number, which one of these five 
2 to the x, 5 over 2 to the x, and pi to the x. Okay? So then we're left, those are in one group, and then we've got 1 fourth to the x and 0.1 to the x in the other group. They um, are 0 when we plug in a really large positive number. What is the difference between those two groups? What's the difference between those two groups? We have um, 2 to the x, 5 over 2 to the x, and pi to the x. They behave similarly. And then we have 1 fourth to the x and 0.1 to the x. What is the difference? When the base is greater than 1, the answer is going to be really, really big. That's why you got the overflow. If you plugged in too big of a number, it was too big for the calculator to process it. That's where the overflow came up. Over here, the base is less than 1. we get zero because you are multiplying a fraction, or well not just a fraction, you're multiplying a number less than one times itself over and over and over and over and over again. And when you're doing that, your denominator is getting massively huge. You're dividing by a really massively huge number and that's going to give you a really, really tiny number. That's why the reverse relationship exists when you plug in a large negative number. When your base is greater than 1, you raise that to a really large number, a large negative number, we're going to get 0 because you are raising a number to a negative power which puts it in the denominator. So that number in the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, divided by a really big number. Okay, and when your base is greater than 1, it's really big because it's the opposite relationship. It's flipping it back over. It's taking that number less than 1, flipping it over, making it greater than 1. Okay, see? Okay, so... From this, when we have an exponential function that is a to the x, one key point will always be what? What was always the same? <coughs> Zero, one. Okay, one key point will always be x is 0, y is 1. As long as your function looks like this, a to the x, one key point will always be 0, 1. A few more easy points. Uh, how about we plug in 1, negative 1. <coughs> we 
Usually 2 and negative 2 are pretty easy. We didn't do it in this table, but those are good values to plug in to uh, help you graph them out. Okay. The third one, it says the end behavior of the exponential function. That's what we're talking about here. When we plug in really big positive numbers and really big negative numbers, that's the ends of our functions. Okay. So our end behavior, when the base is greater than 1, Then to the right, it is increasing. The left is approaching zero. I say approaching because it doesn't actually equal zero, but you get really, really close to it. When your base is less than one, the right side is approaching zero, and the left side is increasing. So <clears throat> write that down and then I'll talk about negative 2, 1 fourth. We're taking that point. Negative 2, 1 half. 0, 1, uh, 1, 2, and 2, 4. We're taking those points. We reflect them. So they flip over the axis. Then we're going to shift them right 1 and down 3. So I always start with the middle point. I start with the 0, 1. So I'm going to move it right 1 and down 3, so that is where my new uh, point is going to be. And then I do that for every other point. I take it, I move it right 1, and <laughs> down 3 units, and that's where I know to put it. Now, you can confirm this with your calculator. You can move those in your y equals to make sure your graph looks like this, but that's how we handle it without going straight to our calculator. And that's what we're going to pick up with tomorrow. Okay? So